what you are about to watch is probably the most important video I have ever made. There will be very little laughing today, very little joking around, and very little sexual innuendos. In fact, none. But I assure you, if you never watch a single one of my videos ever again, you must watch this one. Hey guys, got a very special treat for you today. I have a very special guest on the phone. I am talking to Richard Hirschman. Richard Hirschman was one of the embalmers from that amazing documentary that I don't really want to say the name of, but it's available on some alternate platforms. Richard, just to, uh, just to let everybody know who you are, can you tell us a little bit about what you do and how long you've been doing it and so on? Sure. Um, you know, again, my name is Richard Hirschman. I am a, I am a licensed funeral director and embalmer. Um, I started in my, in this field back around, uh, 2001. I remember that, uh, I was in the funeral home when nine 11 happened. Kind of one of the ways that I remember, uh, about how far back it goes, uh, finished mortuary school in 2004. Worked in the funeral business, um, doing embalming, funeral directing, the whole nine yards. But since 2015, I'm I am what you call a trade embalmer, which means that I don't I don't work. I'm not an employee of a funeral home. I just I help funeral homes out whenever they need help with embalming. So I I travel from one funeral home to another, take care of the embalming uh, process for them preparing the body and uh and then um and then i move on to the next job so kind of like a plumber you know a plumber doesn't own your home but they come and fix your toilet right and i just do the uh, i just do the dirty work that's in the back okay and then um how many how many bodies would you say you've embalmed throughout your entire career <laughs> that would probably be thousands several thousand um I know uh, I probably in the last several years, I'm, I'm going to say I'm average in probably around 400 uh, bodies a year. Um, but then when the pandemic came, or actually it was when the, uh, in starting in la last year was absolutely ridiculous. I think I embalmed over 600 bodies last year. So, I mean, I, it was a huge spike in the number of dead last year. And this year, I think I'm probably sitting around 500 something right now. It's slowed down a little bit, but a part of me is wondering if that's because I just read uh, an article uh, just before you called where uh, Americans uh, are turning away from that magic potion and only about 11 a little over 11 percent have received the latest version of it so i wonder if that might be causing some of the uh the death rate to slow down some at least in my area so so i i would say thousands and thousands i've, I've involved thousands of bodies I, I couldn't even tell you how many altogether. oh my goodness wow so you're you're averaging almost almost two bodies a day if you did 600 bodies last year Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Since the um, the magic potion came out, I believe you said you've you've seen some changes in some of the things yeah. that happened throughout the embalming process. And I was wondering sure. if you could just tell us about that a little bit. Yes. Okay. So the the main reason why I came forward with some of the stuff that I've been finding, and it's a taboo subject for the most part, to talk about what happens and what we see in the embalming room. As you can tell, it's probably, it's not the prettiest job in the world to have. Last year, in January of 2021, uh, the, the death rate started just 
going through the roof. And right away in January, we noticed a huge uptake in um, in blood clots. And blood clots are um, they're they're something that we would normally see off and on in our business. But the amount and the rate that we were seeing them in January was absolutely becoming uh, alarming. And it seemed almost as though there's there's something that was must have been something causing it. And of course, back then we were thinking, well, maybe it has something to do with the pandemic because a lot of people were being labeled as, as a, uh, as what you would call a COVID debt. So, but as, as, uh, the next couple of months went along and I'm going to, I'm estimating around May, maybe a little prior to, but definitely not later than June, there was something that I could see that was different people's blood had changed it's darker it, the clotting was ridiculous but the most alarming the, the thing that stands out the most is it's like it has this white fibrous um, tissue uh, that that is is being found in not just the veins which is typically where you would find a blood clot but we are finding them in the arteries as well. The exact same substance. I have images of these clots um, even prior to embalming. So it's not the mom and flu that's causing these clots. And I and I laid them side by side. You know, the one that I would pull out of the vein that was already there prior to embalming, I could see it. So I go ahead and pull it out. And then the one that come out of the artery, which is uh, laying right next to it. And you can you'll be you would be able to see if you could see the image of this white fibrous strand that runs down the length of it. It's this white fibrous tissue, and I say tissue because it almost resembles tissue. It has the consistency of of kind of like uh, calamari, if people are familiar with calamari. Um, some people would call them. They look almost look like uh, uh, like squid, like tentacles. And uh, some, sometimes they, another good one is, would, would be um, like spaghetti. Um, it just looks like a big, long uh, piece of pasta, but it's very uh, elastic, almost like a rubber band. It's, you can stretch it. Um, it's very pliable. It doesn't dissolve. Where a typical blood clot that we were used to is something that if you try to pick it up, it would be like trying to pick up a piece of grape jelly that you maybe, you know, we're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and some grape jelly falls on the counter and you try to pick it up with your fingers. It's difficult to do. And if you get a rag or something, you can kind of wipe it off. And, you know, if you manipulate with your fingers, it's going to dissolve. And this stuff, this white fibrous tissue just, it just doesn't do that. It is something that's very different. And of course, we you know, when I came out in, um, in, uh, I, I, I spoke out in January of this year, January, uh, it was almost the end of January, around the 26th or 27th of January, 2022. Prior to me doing that, um, I was, I was going around asking other embalmers, uh, that I work with people that have, you know, I have 21 years now, you know, but even me at 20 years, uh, last year, I'm, I'm asking other embalmers that have, you know, the same amount of time as I do sometimes 30, 40. And, and a couple of the embalmers that I talked to had 50 years of experience in this business. And I showed them these images and sometimes they might be in the funeral home and I'd call them to the embalming room and I'd have some of these and I'd be like, have you guys ever seen this stuff before? And the answer was always no, they'd never seen anything like it. So I knew so it wasn't just me. It wasn't an anomaly because I started to see it over and over and over again. And, uh, and, and I became concerned that uh, something's very wrong. And by the fall of last year, around August, September, September is when I took my first picture. I was starting to question if it was um, the new uh, potion that is causing this uh, strange phenomena. Because 
we were getting very few COVID cases, and yet all these people are having this abnormal white fibrous uh, material in their veins and arteries. Let me ask you, Richard, this white fibrous clot-like material that's elastic -y, that's coming out of these people's veins and arteries, how long are some of these clot-like fibrous tissues? Oh, yes. They are very in length, okay? I had a, I had a case one time that was, um, it was, a, it was a, a lady in her um, early 30s, and... She had already, she had gone to the doctor. They, they couldn't figure out anything wrong with her. They sent her back home. And next thing you know, she collapses and dies. And um, she had a whole bunch of them. And they were, they were small, but they looked like um, they were probably about the length of maybe your fingernail, you know, from, you know, from the base of your fingernail, you know, to the tip. So they were maybe, you know, three quarters of an inch to an inch, inch and a half long. But then I've had others that uh, some of them I, I didn't measure, and I, you know, thinking back, I wished I did. But I do have one image that I had done uh, where I laid a, a yardstick next to it, and the one that came out of the artery was 33 inches long. Now I've had some that were longer than that, but unfortunately, I I didn't take a measuring tape to it, so I I can't say exactly what it was, but it was probably at least three feet long. The length of a leg, literally. Good, so, good grief. Sometimes these things are really long. Sometimes they're really short. I mean, I've had some that I've I put a measuring stick to it, and they were like 17 inches long. Um, but I do have the one that an image of one that's 33 inches long. I've had several of those, to be honest. Um, and you know, again, you got to think about it. I, I I didn't even start taking pictures until September of last year, so. We're only talking, you know, what is that? September, we're now in December, so you're talking about, what, 15 months or so? Right, yeah. And and I've got probably close to 200 images on my phone. And so if I'm embalming, you know, four or 500 bodies a year, think about how many, the percentage of bodies that I'm finding this stuff in. And it almost... It's almost mimics the vaccine vaccination rate. So, so I don't know if it, you know, I, I don't always know if these people are vaccinated, but in the beginning, when I was asking questions, I was usually finding the answer was yes, they were. So we're, yeah. we're, we're recording this for the record on, uh, today is Friday, December 2nd. When was the last body you embalmed where you found this white fibrous clot-like tissue? <laughs> Today. <laughs> Today. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I've uh, it's 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 near it's it's usually uh, over fifty percent of the bodies that I'm doing have this tissue in it. So if I had if I had four bodies in one day, which I had four bodies yesterday, as a matter of fact, and. Um, all four of them had abnormalities. Now, some of them weren't the long fiber stuff. The other strange anomaly that I'm seeing besides the white fiber stuff is that it looks like the blood has grains of sand or like coffee grounds. The blood looks dirty. It's really dark and it looks chalky like a dark chalky substance and when the blood when when the fluid drains and 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 the, and the table starts you know like imagine if you spilled um some uh a cup of coffee that had a lot of sediment in it right okay when, once once if you don't touch it and you let the coffee dry off the counter and you, you'll see all of the little tiny fine grains of sand would be left you know what i'm saying so you'd see this residue um, that, that's another uh, abnormality that I'm seeing. And I'm not the only one seeing that. I mean, there's other people are seeing it as well. Um, we don't talk about those quite as much because they're not as, um, they're not as shocking as the white fiber stuff, because a lot of times what's happening, these white fibers, are uh, these white fiber structures that we're seeing, sometimes it looks like they're very fine. Like you can take what would 
be a, a looks like a typical blood clot. And if you were to try to dissolve it, like that grape jelly to dissolve to nothing, what you're left with are like, it looks like, it looks like cobwebs. There's, there's, they're like, they're like fine hairs, something in there is like fine hairs. And, and they're all wrapped up in this, in this blood clot. And, but if you manipulate it, you end up, you end up breaking away the, the actual blood, which would become liquid. And you're left with these fine strands that almost look like spider webs. So I have a, a friend of mine who is a pastor in Oklahoma. And this friend of mine has a very good friend of his who is also an embalmer in, uh, in Oklahoma. And he called his friend because I, I told my, my pastor friend about you. And initially it was very hard I think for him to to believe that this could be happening. So he called his friend who was an embalmer in Oklahoma and he said you have to tell me that this is not happening. And his friend had told him everything that I said was 100% true and he was seeing the same thing. So my question to you, Richard, is what percentage of your fellow embalmers are seeing the same findings that you're finding? Okay, so I mean, there are none that I can think of that are not finding what I'm finding. Now, there are going to be several licensed embalmers that will say they've never seen this before. And let me explain why that would be. A lot of times um, in the funeral home, you have your funeral director. If it's a small location, your funeral director is an embalmer, or maybe he's not, but he's only a funeral director. But so if they're a licensed funeral director and embalmer that is running the funeral home, and he's got other employees that are working with him, some of them may be an apprentice, that is allowed to go back there and do some of the um, work on the embalming cases, or he might have other embalmers. So that person that's licensed, though he's licensed, he's not actively embalming. He's not been in the embalming room in a long time because he has other people doing that job for him. I'm a licensed funeral director as well as an embalmer, but I can't tell you exactly how long it has been since I have sat down, it's been a few years since I have sat down and, and, and actually made funeral arrangements. I'm a licensed funeral director. I could do it legally. I can do it if I needed to, but I'm not, part, I'm not actively doing it. And there are licensed embalmers and funeral directors that are doing the funeral directing, but they're not actively in the embalming room doing the embalming. So they would be an embalmer if you were to ask that would say, no, they've never seen this stuff before. They're not, they're not familiar with it because they're not doing it. And there are many people that will not come out publicly and acknowledge what they're seeing. Again, it's taboo to talk about what we see. If you had a friend like what you just described, more than likely they would tell you the truth. But if you put them on the spot and say, hey, we'd like you to come up here and testify to our congressmen of what you're seeing in the bomb room, they're going to be scared and afraid that there's going to be repercussions to that. And they're just the easiest thing to say is, I don't know what you're talking about. So there's many that might not say anything, but if you can talk to an embalmer, if people that are out there and, I, and I've already seen it, I've been hearing about it from lots of people. I know an embalmer up in Indiana who's been talking to groups of embalmers he does uh he does seminars and he's been asking this question the last few months to these uh seminar in these seminars and almost all hands are raised that are acknowledging the same clots that we're talking about good grief so with with these bodies that you're finding with all of these clots in them have you ever found somebody who's died under age 50 with these clots. With these, with, without these clots that didn't die from something as like some form of trauma, like a car accident, or if they, if they died 
for unknown reasons or if they died from quote unquote natural causes and they're under age 50, have you ever seen one single body that hasn't had these white fibrous clot like substances? Oh, um, well, yeah. I mean, in, in, in years, I mean, like I say, you know, there's, there's always been an occasional, um, unexpected death. Those things happen. Um, the problem we're having right now is the rate at which they are happening. There's a lot of them. The youngest person that I can off the top of my head tell you that I found these strange, um, white fiber stuff in is, uh, 20 years old. Now the individual did not die exact. I mean, I, it's, that's, that's the other thing. I can't tell you that it's the clot itself that killed them. I could just tell you that it was there. And I can tell you that, you know, I'm sure that it can't be healthy for anybody to have something like that in their uh, vascular system. And you haven't seen these clots until recently. Last year. Last year. Yeah, last year. Sometime, sometime, uh, Sometime in the spring of last year, I estimate sometime around May. It could have been a little earlier than that, but it was no later than June of last year. Absolutely, no later than June. I, I, I estimate sometime around May is when I really started seeing these white fibrous uh, tissues. And I, I was speaking to a gentleman in um, Ohio who had reached out to an, uh, somebody who's big in an one of these uh, associations dealing with embalming and he confirmed the same thing uh and he asked how long have you been seeing it he says it's been about in the last year and a half that i've been seeing these things which again puts it about the same time in which i started noticing these wow so it, it's very it's very shocking it's very alarming um i think I it's ter it's i find i find it terrifying to be honest with you Absolutely. It, it, it's, um, I am very, very concerned for humanity. And before I came out, you know, I was losing sleep, uh, you know, at be, between uh, when I took my first image back in September, when I was like really starting to go, oh my God, this is getting worse. I had surgery in November, so my numbers went down. I, I, I had a hernia surgery, so I was out for a few weeks. So I didn't involve as much in November, but People were asking me what the percentage of bodies that I was seeing these things in. And well, I hadn't been really making note of it. So I was like, in November, when I started getting back to work, I, I went ahead and started documenting it. And it was about, it was almost 50% of the bodies that I was embalming had this stuff in them. It still holds that way today. As a matter of fact, uh, when the, the crew of the film, of the documentary that just recently came out, and believe it or not, I looked it up, and it's on YouTube, all over YouTube. I was shocked. <laughs> a friend of mine called me the other day. He said he watched it on YouTube. I was like, "Are you sure?" I didn't. I thought that was being banned on there. He said, "No, it's on there." And I looked it up, and sure enough, it's all over it. Do you um, think but, the Do you think the curtain is going to start to drop? And I think it is. Okay. I I think with what's happening right now, um. They're really trying hard to censor this stuff. However, you know, with the va with the with the rate of the new um, the new magic potion, right? At only eleven percent. What is that telling you about public opinion? Right. I just I don't think I, it's just because of the documentary or some of the stuff that I came out in in some of these interviews, I think it's because people are seeing it for themselves. You don't have to watch alternative media to see your friends are getting sick all of a sudden or you yourself are sick and all you're having all these health issues after you've received that magic potion. What about the people not getting the magic potion and getting um, a blood transfusion while in surgery? Oh, my 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 wife in the background. Um, yes. That's actually a very good question. I had uh, I had some cases earlier on, um, and it was actually this year, I believe, earlier on this year, and I was you know I found this st substance in their in their blood, and then um, uh, the funeral director asked the family if if that person was vaccinated and they said, no, 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 we were against the vaccine. 
And that really kind of threw me for a loop because I'm like, I was pretty convinced that had to be it. Um, and I was like, well, something, something's wrong. What, what, what did, were they receiving any kind of medical treatments or anything? Oh, yeah, they had this, that, and the other. And, and then found out they had received a blood transfusion. Or uh, that was on some of them, and some of them where they received a blood product like they'd received platelets for a treatment. Oh, and my, so I oh reached my God. out to Dr. Ryan Cole, um, and I asked him about, is it possible that it could be transferred that way? And, of course, he he couldn't tell me at the time, uh, and even right now I don't know if he could tell me 100%. He couldn't, he couldn't tell me at the time exactly, but he said it would it, it is of great concern because, I mean, think about it. it is possible. It's just like the HIV pandemic of years ago. So I became concerned about that early on. And I did, I did start saying, Hey, you know, I mean, when people ask me that question, I'm like, yeah, I've had a few, but then I found out later that they had received some form of a blood product. And, and the one that I know of, I mean, this person had received the blood product four months prior to this person's death. Oh my Isn't God. That kind of funny if you think about it, because the vaccines rolled out what the end of December of 2020. And by January of 21, the vaccines were really starting to be pushed, right? Right. And when did I say I started seeing these white virus structures? May, May to June of 21. May. Yeah, no, at June at the latest. For, I think it's probably a little bit earlier than May, but I say it's easy i estimate may give or take a little bit which is about again you're right at about that five month period so is it is there something to the length of time that it takes remember i said even in january the clotting issue started going through the, like crazy but yet i wasn't noticing this white fiber structure i was just noticing a lot of clotting increased clotting i mean just a lot of it but the white fiber structure, it took time for that to start to show up. And I'm thinking out loud as we're talking. Too, sure, you know, I'm sure. I'm trying to recall back and and think of the timelines. And people ask, and I had, you're going to love this. I had a I had a fact checker call me just a couple of days ago. Talk about getting my blood pressure up. She was accusing me. <laughs> she was accusing me of, of, of all kinds of stuff. Like, I'm getting paid. Uh, and I never got paid for the documentary. I have never gotten paid to go to any of these places. I, I mean, I've lost, I've spent a lot of money sending samples to different doctors and stuff like that. I've paid my own airfare to go testify or to share, you know, go to a public forum up in Idaho. I, you know, I, 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 I paid my own way. Nobody's paid me a dime. And I told her, I was like, you know who's being paid here? You are being paid. You're being paid to try to discredit what I and other embalmers are seeing. And let me tell you, I believe I'm right. And if I'm right, and this magic potion is the cause of what we're seeing, then let the blood of the dead and the injured be on your hands and not mine. I'm just trying to bring awareness. And so that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. I mean... That's, that's, that's a big deal. These fact checkers are trying to destroy the credibility. What have we got to lose? I told her I'm, I'm not selling a book. I don't have a web page. I don't have a GoFundMe site. I have absolutely nothing to gain here. And for, I'm just concerned. And for the record, I cold called you on a whim. I'm not paying you anything. You're not paying me anything. And both of us are doing this solely because we are both concerned. Yes. And I wish I was wrong, but I'm afraid I'm right. Because, again, you got to look at the timeline. Because she's this fact checker asked me, well, what makes you think it, it's, 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 the, uh, it's the magic potion? I said, just look at the timeline. I have, I, I hardly never anymore get a person that died from COVID. No, I haven't. I mean, it, it's rare to get a body that's died from COVID, but yet at the same time, I'm still seeing this white fiber stuff. So why? In the beginning, you could have fooled me. It could have been either one. 
You know, coming yeah, back to this, point. coming back to this clot stuff, I had another uh, question pop into my head. Uh, you, sure. you said some of these uh, white fibrous clots could have been upwards of like 33 inches long. Sure. What was the longest actual blood clot that looked normal to you that you've ever found in your entire career? So we're talking pre-COVID, we're talking someone that died of a, a blood clot or a pulmonary embolism, a normal blood clot that resembles grape jelly. What's the, can you pu even pull a strand of it out? Or if you can, how long is it? Okay, so to pull one out like that's pretty difficult to do because they're, they're so weak, they just fall apart. Um, but when you're embalming, as you're, as you're, you're, when we're embalming, we're, we're forcing a formaldehyde into the artery, and that pressure, as we're pushing that fluid in, forces the blood out of an adjoining vein, which is usually right next to that artery. So you got to understand you're pushing fluid in and you're allowing the blood to flow out. Okay. Okay. And so sometimes we could get some really long uh, clots that would come out. And typically it's because it's just, it's just coming out. It's being forced out. You're not necessarily pulling it. Okay. And even if you do help coax it out, you can get some fairly good size clots, normal uh, jelly looking clots that might be, you know, maybe usually they would only be a, maybe an inch or two long, but there have been times where um, that you could get a, get one that might be, you know, six to 12 inches long. See, blood can coagulate um, after a person dies it's called postmortem clotting. And, you know, that's always been around, but they're usually jelly like and therefore it doesn't take much to, to help them out as you're pushing the fluid in so these white fibrous ones they get tangled up and that's what's causing the problem with the embalming process is they tangle up and they clog up the drain tube um or they get bunched up uh inside that vein and it and it doesn't allow the blood to flow anymore so you have to kind of help pull those out to get the fluid flowing again so with a normal blood clot if you force it out and then if you pick up if you take a pair of forceps or something and try to pick it up and, and pull it, yeah. it, it'll just fall yeah. apart. It won't be elasticy and stretchy like these white ones will. Ab absolutely correct. You know, it would, it would, it would fall apart. It would, it would fall apart. It, you couldn't hold it. You, you, I mean, if you were really, really careful, you could maybe try to pick it up and it'll dangle a little bit, but you start getting a longer one together and you try to pick it up. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's just gonna cut in half and, you're going to, you're going to break it up in pieces. And if you were to manipulate it with your fingers, it's just going to turn into, uh, into smaller chunks of grape jelly until you manipulate it to the point. It just literally is like blood and it just flows down the table, just like uh, grape juice. I'm going to ask you to speculate just for a second. I'm wondering where do you think this goes over the next six months, over the next year, over the next two to three years? That is, uh, okay. I hope that, um, I hope that we can find something to uh, eradicate the issue with the clotting. Um, my fear is that this is only going to get worse. I, I, I already seem to be sensing a slowdown in the, in the amount of people that are dying um, because I feel like, you know, a lot of times these people that die, it's quick, unless I'm off, I could be wrong. The thing that worries me now are the amount of people that we're getting that are dying of, um, you know, the diseases like cancers, um, that that's alarming because, you know, that takes time, but some of these people are finding out they have cancers and they're dying so fast that the body doesn't even look, they still look healthy. They, they, they didn't have time to deteriorate. The fight was not long. Like typically a cancer patient would live for, for, you know, several years. And during that time, their body would deteriorate and become emaciated or, 
sometimes tumors and a lot of times they lose their hair and you know all the horrible things that we're familiar with when we deal with cancer sure but nowadays i get cancer patients and they look just as healthy as you and i um so that's scary the other thing that i'm it's it's really sad i was just telling somebody this uh yesterday is unfortunately it's getting to where i'm not shocked to see uh, a baby in the uh in the in the funeral home now yes we've always had cases every once in a while we get a stillborn or you know something like that or a miscarriage or fetal demise those things do happen but at the rate at which it's happening now, it's sad. And, you know, I got called to the funeral home a couple of weeks ago. Um, I told my wife, well, it looks like I got another 30 something year old. She says, you know, what's sad? What's sad is that doesn't shock me anymore. That's, that's what's sad. So the future I am hoping, and I do know, that there are doctors working to try to find answers. I know that for a fact. But if they keep shutting stuff down for people trying to help, it's going to make it to where the death rate's only going to rise. I'm afraid it's going to rise. I, I, I got a bad feeling that we're still in the beginning and the long-term effects are going to start showing its ugly face pretty soon. That's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. And I believe everything I believe, it, I, I'm a very strong Christian. I believe um, that God is the answer to this. And, you know, if you look at a lot of the scriptures, you know, even in the end, even in the end days, you know, the, the plagues come on the earth and people curse God and they continue to get bad because the people refuse to repent. And I think we just need to call on God love one another there's a lot of vaccine injured people that are out there i know it's heartbreaking i got a a message just the other day you know these people are struggling there's a person they're looking at losing their legs if not their life and asking me for help and i'm not a doctor <laughs> you know but this person knows that i'm kind of one of these in the front line with this and they know that i've been working with doctors and and they're working on it they are but this person was in a state where one of the doctors, well, a couple of the doctors that I know that are working on this, they're not in that state, so they can't practice there. I mean, they, the only way for them to get help would be for them to come to the state where they can, they can work on them. But it's, that's just, there's so many more people out there. You know, if you look at the news, look at how many people are having blood clots. That's one of those other things that I, one of the reasons why I came out as I'm reading the stories of all these people and they're talking about blood clots and they were talking about blood clots with COVID and they were talking about blood clots with the, uh, the magic juice. When I'm looking at what I see, these are not your typical clots. They're just different. The blood is different. And that was why I felt like I needed to sound an alarm. I know three people, no, well, I know at least three people that I've talked to, that I've sat with, um, that I've had lunch with, that are military, that are injured. Um, two, one is a pilot, one is a um, student pilot, and the other one is is, is just a, you know, a, a regular uh, army person that... Um, is not a pilot, but just works in, I can't remember what this person does exactly. Uh, but she has two, two children and, and it is so heartbreaking and listening to some of what she's going through, you know, she's afraid she might not make it. And that is heartbreaking. And you know, even in my profession, Richard, I'm an airline captain and I have seen uh, some of my coworkers medical out because they're having issues and um, everything from atrial fibrillation to um, everything else to the point where there there's heart attacks and there's yeah. breathing problems and uh, all sorts of things and there was just a uh, a captain uh, just last week who took off from Chicago O'Hare and he had a heart attack and died right after takeoff, and they made an immediate emergency return back to Chicago O'Hare. 
and it came out that he was fully juiced. Yep. And uh, yep. he he I was. Heard one, I heard a flight attendant in France. Same thing just happened. Uh, so to be to be completely honest, there are three flight crew members that I know of, two flight attendants and one captain, who have died on duty within the last thirty days. Wow! And, and I cannot and confirm if. See here, right? What's that? And there's nothing to see here. Nothing to see here, and I I cannot confirm one thousand percent that these flight attendants were juiced. However. All of the international flight attendants from the international carriers are juiced, and both of them were from international carriers flying an international route. So there you, go. you you do the math. In my entire career, and I've been flying airplanes for a long time, a couple of decade over a couple of decades now, and I have never heard of flight crew members dying at the pace at the rate that we're at right now yes and seeing a part of me feels like that's what's making some people want to question because it's not like i can't tell you that i've never had a cancer patient that found out they had cancer and two weeks later they died i can't tell you that i've never seen that just like i can't tell you i've never seen a a miscarriage or I've never seen a baby that had died. You know what I'm saying? I've seen, yes, those things happen. And sometimes a young person will die. I've seen that in my career, but it was so rare that you could almost count it on one hand. But the rate at which they're happening, like you just said, the rate at which it's happening is so alarming that people have got, and that's why I think the numbers are down. That's why I think people are rejecting this finally, but yet our governments are, seems like they've been continuously pushing and pushing and pushing and mandating and mandating and not listening. And they're going to try to make it sound like, oh yeah, well, when we finally heard that there was problems, we, we stepped in and we stopped it. We're your hero. No, you're the ones that forced an experimental thing to go into people's bodies against their will. You need to be held accountable. And we, the people, need to remember who in the heck did this to us. Because we're all affected. I'm not vaccinated myself, but I have family that have been vaccinated. And I have some of those family members that are injured. And I am not going to forget who did this to them. And those, Some of them are companies. What's that? And those people that are injured, they do need to file VARES. Well, most most people don't even know what VARES is. So you take all of the VARES reports that have been filed, and it's probably like 10% of what the actual number is. I was talking to an RN three, four days ago. And this RN, he told me the problem with VARES is it takes them about 45 minutes to fill it out. But that's not the worst part. The worst part, and this 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 RN comes from the middle of Texas. I won't say exactly where because, you know, they're all afraid of losing their jobs so they get found out. He said that the hospital frowns on those that fill out those reports. Oh, wow. So, yeah, and that fact checker was telling me, you can't trust VAERS. And I told her what, what, what that RN told me. I said, you're absolutely right. You can't trust them because this RN told me that the hospital itself frowned on those that filled out the VAERS report. So that tells me that the VAERS is, the, the, the side effects are far worse than you can imagine. And that's just from one hospital. Let me give you another thing that I had. Another person that was telling me that their friend uh, works at a hospital and was in a meeting like within 48 hours after that documentary that just came out. In that documentary, um, they said they're, they're, they're going to look at it as a, uh, as a conspiracy theory. And one of the persons said, no, I know an embalmer that's seeing the exact same thing. It's not a conspiracy theory. And that person was told, we will not discuss this. It could be grounds for termination. So they are trying to silence people from speaking about this. But the truth will come out, period. It will come out. And those who mandated this, 
need to be held accountable. I'm all for amnesty or not amnesty. I'm all for forgiveness. But just because somebody commits a murder and kills somebody doesn't get them off from the sentence they deserve. Oh, I agree. I agree with you wholeheartedly. We're, we're living in some scary times and uh, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to end. And I, I tend to agree with you on the on the speculation aspect of it. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better, but I pray I'm wrong. These doctors and all these all these bureaucracies and all these other things, which is another thing that fact checker asked me, well, didn't you bring this to the CDC and all these health organizations uh, first? I said, no, I didn't. I said, you know, they wouldn't listen to me anyway. They won't listen to people like Peter McCullough, Ryan Cole, Robert Malone. If they're not listening to them, people, you think they're going to listen to some little embalmer in Southeast Alabama? And for the record... Ryan Cole is a, a pathologist, correct? Yes. Okay. And these other individuals are are what? Um, Peter McCullough is a cardiologist. Uh, Robert Malone is the one who is, a, you know, part of the originators of kind of coming up with the mRNA uh, technology. You know, so... So the point is, is that they're not listening to these experts. And yes, they are definitely experts that cannot be disputed. Yep. Then no, why, why would they listen to a small town embalmer? I agree with you exactly. wholeheartedly. Yes. And I was, you know, and when it comes to, you know, and there's other people that say, well, you know, aren't you afraid of getting in trouble because you're, you sent off tissue samples well it's not really a tissue sample it looks like tissue but it really isn't it would have gone down into the sewage you sent off this didn't you did you get the family permission to do this that and the other and i'm like no did you get family permission to take these images no what gives you the authority to do that well i stand on this i feel like god i have to be held accountable to him and i feel like humanity may be at stake and i have a moral obligation to humanity itself and if you want to hang me over some stupid little thing because i didn't get some written permission and to take a picture or to send a tissue sample out or to share the stuff that i'm seeing to try to wake people up well so be it humanity is more important and i have to answer to god mike adams the health ranger um he did a uh, ICPMS, which is um, mass uh, spectrometer, whatever it is, to analyze this uh, material. And what he found out was, or what, according to what he said is, it is not a blood clot because it only has like 4% iron. And if it would be a blood clot, it would have had a much higher concentration of iron in it. So he's... He's basically saying it's not a blood clot. Even Ryan Cole, even though he has a little different, he's looking at it a different way, more on a pathological way. Um, he's calling them amyloid-like protein. Now, I'm not either one, so I don't try to say what it exactly is or isn't. I say let the experts. I just provide what I have and let them figure it out. You know, Ryan Cole's calling it an amyloid-like protein. He's not necessarily calling it an amyloid, but it's an amyloid-like. So I looked up an amyloid. What is an amyloid? An amyloid is nothing more than a misfolded protein. And you have proteins all throughout your body, all kinds of stuff. You know, it's what you're made of, mostly. And so fibrin is what your body uses to... to uh, to block up um, small cuts and things like that. If you didn't have fibrin in you, you'd bleed to death if you were to get a cut. But your body also has enzymes that break that fibrin down so that if you had too much fibrin, you get a blood clot. And you know, fibrin was probably in all of the blood clots that I've seen in my history of doing this. The issue is they were probably so small, they're microscopic, and I did not see it. They might be white if you got enough of them together. I don't know. I've never, like I said, all of us embalmers never seen these white fibrous materials before. And even if they was an occasional case, then 
it would be a rare exception, you know, not all of the time. But if you have an amyloid, a misfolding of that protein, let's just say it's the fibrin. And so now it's an amyloid. Your body is going to have a hard time dissolving it because it doesn't have, it, it, it's a different type of protein. It's misfolded and you need to have the right enzyme to break that down. And so this might be something like what Ryan Cole is talking about, an amyloid-like protein. That is the reason is amyloid. Therefore, the body has a hard time breaking it down because it's a new protein. It's something abnormal. Typical blood bust, uh, clot busters aren't necessarily working on it the way it would on a typical blood clot. Well, thanks, so for, thanks for explaining that because I was just about to ask you what in the world is an amyloid-like protein, so you, you, got, you, got, you got ahead of me on that one. And uh, just to uh, tie things all together, um, the first time we talked on the phone, I mentioned I was coming up to Alabama on a hunting trip in January. I would still love to come by and maybe do a follow-up video, video with you while I'm up there on my deer hunt and check out some of those clots that you have yeah absolutely yeah are you gonna go hunting up um with um oh what's his name the country music singer that uh country boy can't survive what's his name <laughs> what's the guy that sings country boy can't survive hank williams jr you gonna go oh with him? no 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 it's just uh i'm going with uh buddy of mine who's a deputy in Louisiana and um, that pastor friend that I had mentioned to you from Oklahoma he's going to be coming on the trip as well nice well because you're you're going up to where this I mean I know he has a place up there so okay I was just curious but um, so yeah if you come up here uh, you give me a call and 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 we'll we'll uh, we'll meet and uh, we can do a video you can you can you can see some of the samples that I have left. Um, you know, again, I've sent many of them off to uh, different places. There are people working on this, though. That is the hope. And, I, and I'm a strong believer in God. God is the answer for all of this. And uh, we, need to, we need to find solutions because there's a lot of people that are going to need help, I'm afraid. Well, Richard, I thoroughly appreciate you letting me turn on the camera and uh, ask you some questions. I hope if we can help even one person out there somewhere in YouTube land who has been having a little bit of uh, uncertainty, I hope this helps to put certain things into perspective for them. It will all have been worth it, at least for me. And I'm sure. sure I'm sure for you as well. And uh, yeah. I thank you so much for coming on, Richard. Can I add one more thing to what you were just talking about? Absolutely. For those people that, for those people that have already had some of this magic potion and they're considering getting some more, I believe Dr. Ryan Cole is onto something when he says this stuff. Some that because of the manufacturing, there was many of these doses that were given out that was basically mush because it wasn't handled properly. It didn't have this, it wasn't manufactured well. And that's why so many people might be just fine because when they got that magic potion, they really got nothing. And so you're playing Russian roulette if you keep getting these things. So there's, yes. a, there's a lot of people that are out there that seem to be just fine. And they may be just fine because they may have been one of the people that got a weakened version of this that wasn't toxic to them. But we don't know that 100%. So he says the more you get, the more chances you have of having side effects. So, And there's a website that you can go to to look up your specific potion that got injected into your body. Mm -hmm. And I, be I believe it's howbadisyourbatch.com. And you can, right. you can type in the lot number and it will tell you how many um, adverse negative things have happened with that batch. Right. And again, but even for those people that still feel totally fine, even in those bad batches, it's not that everybody dies. You know, it's not that everybody has these adverse events. You know, everybody has a little bit different reaction to certain things. Like with peanut butter, you know, it's funny, isn't it? How they took peanut butter out of so many schools because a couple of kids had a reaction. Right. 
and yet they won't stop this thing and you've got thousands thousands of deaths and even more thousands of adverse reactions and they still continue to put this on the market so we're all we're all made different thank you so much richard we'll plan on a follow-up with you in january and uh sir it has been my pleasure what follows is what richard was talking about these are original images they're not doctored and many of them are directly from richard hirschman <laughs>